Hey guys, this is Healthy Life Designing. I'm your host, Darian Rolls. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out the show today. Our topic today is going to be on cranial sacral therapy. And our guest is the cranial sacral therapist herself, Sharon Hartnett. And I've had the opportunity to uh, meet her in person and experience what she has to offer, as well as my assistant joining me and getting some relief from uh, something that had been holding her back in her life as well. And we're gonna have her on the show joining us when we come back. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Hello everyone, we are back. This is Healthy Life Designing and our wonderful guest, Sharon, is now here joining us today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Making the trip from your wonderful, gorgeous ranch where you have your horses. And Sharon and I, I, I ventured out weeks ago with my assistant and we both came out to your place and experienced a little bit of what you do. And I just have to say ever since then, it has it's definitely blown my mind and getting to learn more about what you do has been um, it's been a pleasure learning about the in-depth of it and what it's done for me and Jerrica, the girl that works with me. It has been awesome. Good. So where did this all start for you? I would say that it started as a healing journey. Mm -hmm. I used to live in Colorado and at that time, I just became very sensitive to things, just no noticing that there was a real subtle way of living and uh, I moved to Ohio, mm -hmm. and I went to massage school, then I moved to the Washington DC area, and studied structural integration, which works as a 10 series, doing structural work with people. And, and what is that exactly? So Ida Rolf started structural integration. She's the main pioneer, and I think she started looking at this like in the 40s, and actually until she was pretty old, she worked with people. And you look at the body, and you say, well, are there twists, are there rotation, what's the alignment? And the idea is to work with the body in these 10 sessions called a recipe. Mm. And you start with the upper body for breathing, the lower body to get people more stable and integration. Then you start going deeper and deeper from all these different angles working with the fascia. Mm -hmm. And um, I know like when I first was I didn't go to the Rolf Institute, I went to a different school, but when I was first Rolf, I have an identical twin sister, mm -hmm. and she was taller than me, and when I got Rolf, I was actually like a half inch taller than her. Oh my gosh. I got so much length in my spine, right. and I really stacked up better, mm -hmm. so that, I mean, that was, and I also felt really good. So I did that really for about 18 years, and now I'm getting close to 60, so, I'm, I've really geared more towards doing a lighter touch type of work, but now and then I still will work with somebody doing the structural integration work. Okay. Yeah. And can you explain to the viewers really what cranial sacral therapy is? Yes, so basically we have cerebral spinal fluid that's created in the ventricles of the brain. Mm -hmm. And it's ongoing, but it will create more and then it kind of creates less. And the cerebral spinal fluid circulates around the brain and then down around the spine. Mm -hmm. And then it's also on the other side of that is being reabsorbed back into the venous system. So it's being reabsorbed back in. And so as it's being created, you can feel anywhere on the body when it's being created, we call it flexion. So it moves out, like if I have my hands on your hips, I'll feel the hips, I'll feel like this fluid opening and then there's a rest period, it opens more, and then it goes back in like a neutral place and then into extension. So 
anywhere in the body, I can feel what's going on with the cerebral spinal fluid, even though it's localized in the brain and in the spine. Mm -hmm. It just creates this universal motion throughout the whole body. Right, and my personal experience, well, and in, in Jerica is what was kind of just like that. We just did a little bit of it, but you worked a lot with the skull. Can you talk about what you did with, with Jerica? And how, I right. mean, it was shorter, and it wasn't a full session, but kind of just to give people an idea. Of how we do that. So I did bring a cranium. This is my head. And so I usually actually, with a cranial sacral session, we'll start at somebody's feet, but mm -hmm. most people will notice a lot more when we get to the head. Mm -hmm. But there's actually, you know, in the cranium, these bones, there's actually sutures here. Like this is a sagittal suture. And and actually this suture in particular kind of tells us when the tells the body when to create more fluid and when not to because of a reflex in there. But there's also like a suture here too. And so all those sutures should be moving and um, all these bones are interrelated pretty much, especially by the sphenoid bone here, um, except maybe the uh, max mandible here. But anyway, so we put our hands on the bones and we use these to, kind of, to give us a lot of information. But we also will feel, so like if I was talking about how the fluid increases, so if my hands are here, and I feel the skull kind of come open, and then it comes back to center, I would say, or immediately. And I'm just listening to that rhythm. That's the first thing I do with somebody. Mm. And so it helps release any restrictions, but also I've done a lot more advanced work with the brain. So like a beginner practitioner might do something just working with the rhythm or putting the hands where the sphenoid are and releasing the bones and making sure that everything's floating and, and moving well. But as you get more and more into the cranial work, you can actually use your intention to go deeper into the brain. So like if I'm at the back of the brain, I may say, okay, so what's going on with the cerebellum? And I just listen and I listen. So a lot of what I'm doing is actually listening to the brain. And it starts to show me, I'll say, well, where's the dysfunctional pattern? And I'll feel something like the brain, um, like it offers up this information. It's almost like consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, and then I say, well, how can I support the brain? And, su and stuff just starts to unwind and happen. And I guess I just want to say about the cranial work, Dr. Upledger, where I studied, he created, he was the creator of the Upledger Institute. He's an osteopathic doctor, and this is based really on that there's an inner wisdom or an intelligence in the body, and that intelligence tells us what to do. So when I'm working, I'm just listening to that person's own intelligence. Right, right. Yeah, that's and a long answer. <laughs> no, but it, it, it kind of gives, you know, telling people, you know, what are you really doing, and with Jerica, she'd been experiencing headaches. Right. And you just you just you did the same thing right. basically in a shorter amount of time than what you normally would do for a session but what was incredible was that you and I didn't know that she had been experiencing these headaches for years and years and years but your session with her helped relieve those mm -hmm. and that was was it 3 weeks ago maybe mm -hmm, about that or something like that around there and she's not had the headaches ever since. Right, right. Well, it's interesting because some people, you can they can come in and in seven minutes, you can have a great result. Mm -hmm. But other people, it does take a long time. And so it's interesting because I get a lot of clients and some people want to get better in one session. But because I'm not really in charge of what's happening, I'm the support, I'm the facilitator of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That body shows me, you know, what needs to happen. And with Jerica, you know, it said this is what needs to happen. I just listened and followed and she hasn't had a headache. Some people um, I've had to work with for a long time, especially like one of my specialties is working with people with concussions. Mm -hmm. And often they have fallen or hurt themselves or been in a car accident, and there's a whole lot of body stuff that needs to release and integrate before we can actually even get to the cranium. Mm -hmm. 
And even sometimes after I really get the cranium functioning better, right. or I'm facilitating that, we go in and do mouth work. Ah. And so, so every person, what they're presenting through their biology history is showing me what wants to happen first, and then it goes to the next thing, then what wants to happen, then what wants to happen. And so that person's healing is based on what their biology is telling me, but also that deeper wisdom, that deeper knowledge that knows how to heal. Mm. I think it's important that people will know that we have this intelligence. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think we're gonna take a quick break. Right there's a good time to take a break. And when we come back, we will talk more about, there's a little prop back here, the sacrum, and a little bit about my experience and a lot of different conditions that you might have that you would really benefit from trying cranial sacral therapy. And we will have more with Sharon when we come back. Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm a recovering addict. For 10 of the last 11 years, I've been struggling with addiction, homelessness, incarceration, and just loneliness. However, since getting clean this past year, I've accomplished more than I have in those 10 years combined. After attending outpatient counseling services, inpatient counseling services, living a sober living house, and attending 12-step meetings, I've been able to regain control of my life and begin to achieve goals I've always dreamed of. Addiction can destroy lives in many ways. Whether you need help with childcare or financial assistance, everyone deserves a new beginning. Recovery supports are just that, supports for recovery. My life mattered, your life matters too. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. Hey guys, we are back. This is Healthy Life Designing. If you didn't get the chance to see what was going on in the beginning of the show, we're talking about cranial sacral therapy with our guest, Sharon Hartnett. She is a cranial, cranial sacral therapist. And earlier in the show, we talked about the skull and just a little bit about it. But can we, since it's cranial sacral therapy, can you talk about how we've got our props back here, how the, the skull and the, the sacrum are they work together. Mm -hmm. So in craniosacral therapy, we're really looking at the body as a whole organism. And so I did talk a little bit about the cranium. And this is the occiput, this purple bone. The cranium, I'm calling it a skull. It's the cranium. The cranium. And here is the sacrum. And there's actually a bone, oops, a bone fell off, that goes here, which is the tailbone. And Basically, when I begin, one of the most important things, you know, holistically, is you want to have this whole pelvic cavity, it, it's all connected, but you want to have a sacrum moving, and it moves up towards the head, and then it moves back down. And while this is happening, can you hold that for yep. a sec? Um, you know, the cranium's doing the same thing, so they're both moving. See if they move together. At yeah, the same so, time. but it would oh. actually be turned around towards you. This way. So they're both going like this. That would be bad if it was right. the other way. Yeah, if somebody would be really upside down. <laughs> right. Right? So um, we can put those back down. But the spine itself goes to the lumbar, like about L1, L2, and then it kind of differentiates and goes down. But there are these meninges that go around the spine. And what are those? And so you have the dura mater, which is the outside meninge. Then you have the arachnoid, and underneath that is the subarachnoid, where the um, cerebral spinal fluid mm -hmm. really flows. And then underneath that is this delicate tissue called the pia mater. They each have different functions, but as it's flowing, if there's a restriction, for example, in the spine, and you have these little nerve roots that come out and one's compressed, the cerebral spinal fluid, it can protect different things, it can help to move something and release it, um, it nourishes, it eliminates waste. And so the more that you have this nice flow going, the healthier the central nervous system is. And the cranial sacral system really is strongly interconnected with the central nervous system. Mm -hmm. So people who have, for example, anxiety right. or issues from trauma, mm -hmm. chronic illness, from developmental issues from when they were younger, um, that shows up in the spine. 
Um, a healthy spine really tells you that you have a healthy life in a lot of different right, ways. That's the same right? way with Pilates, yeah. Yeah, and so the idea is from a body work perspective to release the restrictions, help the body integrate and also to deal with the cellular memory. So that could mean that if somebody's got uh, been in an accident, as it releases, emotional stuff can come up. So yeah. And <laughs> the emotional side is what I experienced. Mm -hmm. And on my journey with you, I think what I've learned, you know, even in this past year from a personal standpoint is me being vulnerable. And you know, being on a table with someone and you know, allowing myself to just really open up and what is really going on with my body and just being in the moment with my body and noticing what is happening when you have, you know, your hand in a certain place asking me a certain question. It's almost as if I knew my body was responding to it. And it's like I didn't want it to because I would feel it. And right. for me, emotional things really did come up. And then you would you would kind of peel the layers and continue asking me questions while you're touching a certain body part at a certain time, which is what you had said in the beginning of the show, is that you're feeling where the fluid is going. Mm -hmm. Well, and how the fluid's affecting the rest of the body yes. and how the nervous system is working in relationship to the rest of the body. And, and mm -hmm. I had a pretty significant imbalance and once I was aware as to what was causing it and why and how to kind of bring that back to balance, it was so emotional for me. But at the same time, it was relief mm -hmm. because I could, you know, by the time we were done with our session, I could feel my body. I felt more equal within my body as a whole. I mean, I even left and I thought, oh my gosh, my left side works just as good as my right side right now. And I just, I felt more, I felt fresh and I felt a little more complete. Mm -hmm. And I guess like to me the word complete is kind of like feeling integrated because that's what this does is a lot of times like if you think about like a four year old who falls off of a bicycle, mm -hmm. they fall, they hurt themselves, they cry and they may not process the whole cycle of it. And you could be 40 years old and getting a session and all of a sudden this memory comes up and then the emotion that's attached to that and there's a thought process mm -hmm. and some people it's spiritual type of experiences mm -hmm. that happens but uh, talking about getting a little bit into the energy of it sometimes we work with what's called an energy cyst mm -hmm. and so what it feels like to me is that there's like a chaotic energy so like if you are forcefully going into like you know like a car part of a car or onto the driveway or something and hurting yourself that energy stuck there and it will work for a while but after a while it takes a toll on the body and when you get the cranial sacral work I can feel that and I ask it well what wants to happen here so I'm not like the healer doing something I'm the facilitator saying how do I help you to release and to integrate and so if somebody's got two asymmetrical sides and they don't feel connected there. Mm -hmm. And then this one hip just starts to let go. That energy, like, the, and also not just the energy, but the cellular awareness starts to reconnect. Right. It's like finding a reconnection on your way back to home in your body. And, and I even connected with that because I had a severe concussion a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And you had talked with me about that and, and what could have happened with possibly like energy being stuck in a certain piece of my brain, which I find very fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I had had certain issues with my eyes and my, my head, and it probably does stem back to that. Mm -hmm. But what are some other things that, the other conditions that you can help with? So primarily, there's three or four different clients that I tend to attract. One is concussions. Mm -hmm. um, when I did my diplomate, studies and certification with Upledger, that was one thing I focused on. And a lot of people who have concussions or traumatic brain injury don't really get help, mm. you know, from mainstream mm -hmm. conventional medicine. And I have found that by listening to the brain and dialoguing with it, whether it's quietly without me talking, or whether it's doing a dialogue with a certain part of the brain, that people start to bring awareness and that intelligence starts to self-correct. So I've had lots of people with concussions who've had like 
symptoms for two or three years come in and they hadn't gotten better and after doing like 10 sessions that they are ready to move on with their life. Wow. So concussions is a big one. Mm -hmm. Anxiety is a huge piece. Yes. Um, if you think about it, like when people get anxious or have PTSD or something like that, information comes into the brain, into the amygdala, it relates to the hypothalamus and then goes down, you know, right above the kidneys are the adrenals and it sends cortisol. And this whole thing, you know, for fight or flight goes on. When you do cranial sacral therapy, um, as the system starts to become more aware and process and complete those cycles that never got finished of mm -hmm. fear, people start to get more centered and they can function better in their lives. Okay. Um, so I've had a lot of success with people who've had anxiety, PTSD, um, panic attacks. Mm. But they also have to really work through it, you know, because those types of things, like I fell off of my horse and I get cranial sacral therapy. And even two years later, sometimes when I'm on the table, a memory will come up of me falling off my horse and something lets go and then it just integrates. Um, the third thing is chronic pain and fibromyalgia. I get a lot of people with those because cranial sacral therapy is such a light touch. You know, they can, especially people with fibromyalgia, they can receive the work. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a lot of emotional com component to fibromyalgia, I find. So while I'm not a psychotherapist, I have been trained through Hakomi, through the Upledger Institute, also through Pat Ogden, who teaches trauma training how to support people to process not only the body, but the feelings that come up. Mm. Did I answer your question? Yeah, no, you did. Okay. And, and, and you've got more experience just in the things that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. because you also have um, equine therapy, mm -hmm. equine healing therapy, but you've also done a good bit of traveling mm -hmm. in your own personal journey. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I thought was really cool is you taught you you did a like a study with dolphins and mm -hmm. like the healing process with dolphins mm -hmm. and can you talk just a tiny bit about that i guess before i get to the dolphins i'm going to say like uh, my favorite things i've done in my life have been with animals mm. and the first one was going to africa so i've been to africa and there's something just that, that wakes you up about being so connected to the land and the animals and the wild but like if I could recommend to anybody to do like who, who like different species to do something, this through the Upledger Institute, they do have a training for therapists, which I've done to the trainings, but just lay people can go and be clients for five or six days and they go work with the dolphins down in the Bahamas. And Dr. Upledger started this many, many years ago mm -hmm. and Chaz and Kat have been continuing their program. And, um, I just had amazing experiences for me. Like one time I thought, oh, nothing happened. Cause when I used to travel and do the dolphin excursions, it wasn't the same thing. But when I went to my room, it was like, I, this sounds like so crazy, but it was like, I was the ocean. And like they downloaded information into my brain and it sounds bizarre, but I really am convinced that dolphins are so intelligent and everybody there had some type of message you know, that came to them that was profound. And I really do believe that animals, um, that there's this universal intelligence that we can all learn to communicate if we listen and we pay attention. And I do find that with my horses right, exactly. as well. And um, I studied with, her name's Jackie, uh, I think now I gotta remember her last name, but she's in Cleveland and she teaches leadership through equine. And sometimes you'd go on her farm and it was like magical and she had like huge horses. She had a zebra, um, all kinds of different horses. And, and magical things would happen like you'd be working with the horses on an issue or maybe there'd be a group of people and a horse would walk right into the middle of the circle. And, and what happens is like they're such incredible teachers. Horses are so heart-centered and they're, their intelligence to me seems much more emotional intelligence. 
and and they and each person will walk away with like a profound message of what that horse brought to them. Right. And then sometimes you'd see like all these birds at the end just flock over you. I mean, it was magical. But that just it just goes to show you've got you have all of these tools mm -hmm. and resources of your own personal experience. Mm -hmm. And you've been able to just kind of take all of these little bits and pieces of things mm -hmm. and your education and kind of just mold it into what you do right now, mm -hmm. which, which is awesome. Well, I think anybody who, I guess what I would say is I feel very much like you do in service. And when you really listen to this intelligence inside of you, it takes you on a journey. And yes, I've done many different things and I love working with the clients and the horses as well. And when a client comes in, I really just listen to them and I, and I decide, well, what do I want to do with this person? Or how can I best support this person to be the optimal person that they can be? Mm -hmm. And yes, yeah, so all these different things that I've learned and done in my life, my experiences, makes me like a vessel that all of this can help my client. Service, right? And even when I work with my clients, I, I bow down to that which is greater than me. And I say, show me how I can be in service. Mm -hmm. And that's where the magic happens, right? That's where it all happens, mm -hmm. something way beyond who I am. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't, you work out of your home, mm -hmm. but then you also work in the Columbus area. In Worthington, yes. So is it okay for you to, to mention where you work up there as well, too? Sure, I work on Prosperity in Worthington. Okay. And I just, actually, I was working there sometimes on Tuesdays, and I've made the commitment because I wanted to be more in the city, and I wanted to start building more relationships in mm -hmm. the city. And so I'm working Tuesdays and Wednesdays in Worthington now. And I know we only have a few minutes left, but that's something that I wanted to also mention because that's another thing that you and I have in common is um, when, when we had met the first time, is what I really loved right before I left, you talked about you know working more in community and that you love to connect with people, but you're really true about it. And I know I, I say it all the time and people that know me, I say it all the time. Sorry, I say it all the time, but connecting with people and being in your community and providing a service to people, it is a gift that I think that we're all supposed to use in some form or another, everybody can do it. And I, I just, I really admired that. That was like one of the last things that you said to me. And getting to know you has been awesome. I love what you're doing and it's so exciting that you're here and that can, you can help kind of bring awareness to something, another resource for people that's not talked about, it's not in a conversation, it's not out there, but it's, it's another resource. It's not medications, it's not your traditional way to go about things, but people that are open-minded, that are really looking for different ways to heal, and like you had said, tra traumatic brain injuries and PTSD, anxiety, those people need help, I think, now more than they ever have. And so this message is for you. Find Sharon. If you don't have a Sharon in your area, <laughs> find one because cranial sacral therapy is awesome. I've experienced it. A few other people I know close to me have experienced it and it's been nothing but good positive results for us. And I just want to thank you again so much. Is there anything else that you want to say? We have maybe one or two minutes left. Um, well, I guess what I want to say is that I feel like healing begins at home. Mm -hmm. So it begins in our body, no matter what kind of body we're, we have or what kind of shape it is. You know, bringing awareness to home is really essential. But I also think it's really important for us to share, you know, our gifts, our journey out in the world, especially in this day and age. It is time for us to grassroots and connect. And this is something that I really loved about you too, Aww. is that you have this vision of people in Columbus connecting and that's something I want because when we come together, when we can work as a whole and for the higher good, we can create like really great things t you know, together. And I would love to see that happen in Columbus and I think you're a big part of that. Well, thank you. So thank you. Very much, yeah. we need to get our craniums together, people, and, <laughs> yeah. and get this figured out. But we are out of time. Thank you so very much for checking our show out. Sharon Hartnett, where can they find you if they want any information on what you're doing? 
Uh, you can call me directly at 740-966-5153. And that is all we have today. Thank you so very much.